pure and holy, tried and true, with thanksgiving, I'll be St. Columbanus. My name is Stacy Rankins and I'm so excited to be with you. Thank you so much for celebrating the liturgy with us. This evening, we recall the evening nearly 2,000 years ago when Jesus gathered with his friends one final time before he was arrested, tried, convicted, and put to death. Knowing he was soon to die, he took the opportunity to give them one final lesson. He washed their feet, each and every one, and charged them to do the same for others. As we begin the Paschal Tritium tonight, our remembrance of Jesus' passion, death, and resurrection let us be nourished at the table of the Eucharist, sustained in our mission to wash each other's feet. The scripture readings for Mass are, are found in the handout that was distributed as you walked in. As we gather to worship as the family of St. Columbanus, please stand as we begin our liturgy with a song from our ministers. Clap your hands today. You know this song has the whole whole trinity in one song. Kind of the Bible in one song. Lord, I lift your name on high. You came from heaven to earth to show the way. From the earth to the cross. My debt you paid from the cross to the grave. From the grave to the sky, that's right, Lord, we lift your name on high. Come on, sing it, Lord, I lift, Lord, I lift your name on high. Lord, I love sing your praises. I'm so glad you're in my life. I'm so glad you came to save us. I'm so glad you're in my life. I'm so glad you came to save us. Oh, you came from heaven to earth. You showed the way from the earth to the cross. I can't pay from the cross to the grave, from the grave to the sky. Lord, I lift 
together this evening as a community of faith to celebrate the beginning of these most holy days. We come together to lift high the name of Jesus, to celebrate this gift of life that Jesus comes to share with all of us. And so church, as we gather together, we call on God in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. We know that it's as we gather here at this table of mercy that God offers all of us the gift of peace, the forgiveness of our sins, the promise of a new beginning for each of us. And so my friends, as we prepare to celebrate the sacred mysteries, we first pause to call to mind our sins and to ask again for God's pardon and peace. at the right hand at 
the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us, for you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, the Most High Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in the glory of God the O God, who have called us to participate in this most sacred supper, in which your only begotten Son, when about to hand himself over to death, entrusted to the Church a sacrifice new for all eternity, the banquet of his love, grant, we pray, that we may draw from so great a mystery the fullness of charity and of life. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Exodus. The Lord said to Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, this month shall stand at the head of your calendar. You shall reckon in the first month of the year. Tell the whole community of Israel, on the 10th of this month, every one of your families must procure for itself a lamb, one apiece for each household. If a family is too small for a whole lamb, it shall join the nearest household in, proc in procuring one and shall share in the lamb in proportion to the number of persons who partake of it. The lamb must be a year old male and without blemish. You may take it from either the sheep or the goats. You shall keep it until the 14th day of this month. And then with the whole assembly of Israel present, it shall be slaughtered during the evening twilight. They shall take some of its blood and apply it to the doorposts and the lintel of every house in which they partake of a lamb. That same night, they shall eat its roasted flesh with unleavened bread and bitter herbs. This is how you are to eat it. With your loins girt, sandals on your feet, and your staff in hand. You shall eat like those who are in flight. It is the Passover of the Lord. For in the same night, I will go through Egypt, striking down every firstborn of the land, both man and beast, and executing judgment on all the, the gods of Egypt, I, the Lord. But the blood will mark the houses where you are. Seeing the blood, I will pass over you. Thus, when I strike the land of Egypt, no destructive blow will come upon you. This day shall be a memorial feast for you, which all your generations shall celebrate with pilgrimage to the Lord as a perpetual institution. The word of the Lord. is a communion with the blood of Christ. With
With the blood of Christ, a blessing cup is a communion. With the blood of Christ, with the blood of Christ. How shall I make a return to the Lord? for all the good he has done for me. The cup of salvation I will take up and I will call upon the name of the Lord. A blessing cup is the communion with the blood of Christ with the blood Precious in the eyes of the Lord is the death of his faithful ones. I am your servant, the son of your handmaid. You have loosed my bonds. A blessing cup is the communion with the blood. With the blood of Christ. To you will I offer sacrifice of thanksgiving, and I will call upon the name of the Lord. My vows to the Lord I will pay in the presence of all his people. is a communion with the blood of Christ with the blood of Christ a blessing God is a communion with the blood of Christ with the blood first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, I received from the Lord what I also handed on to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the night he was handed over, took bread, and after he had given thanks, broke it and said, this is my body that is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, also the cup after supper, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the death of the Lord until he comes. The word of the Lord.
give you a new commandment, says the Lord. Love one another as I have loved you. Oh, glory, glory in all things. Give the Lord glory. Savior, he's worthy to be praised. My sisters and brothers, the Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Before the feast of Passover, Jesus knew that his hour had come to pass from this world to the Father. He loved his own in the world, and he loved them to the end. The devil had already induced Judas, son of Simon the Iscariot, to hand him over. So during supper, fully aware that the Father had put everything into his power, and that he had come from God and was returning to God, he rose from supper and took off his outer garments, he took a towel and tied it around his waist. Then he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and dry them with the towel around his waist. He came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Master, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus answered and said to him, What I am doing, you do not understand now, but you will understand later. Peter said to him, You will never wash my feet. Jesus answered him, Unless I wash you, you will have no inheritance with me. Simon Peter said to him, Master, then not only my feet, but my hands and head as well. Jesus said to him, Whoever has bathed has no need except to have his feet washed, for he is clean all over. So you are clean but not all, for he knew who would betray him. For this reason, he said, not all of you are clean. So when he had washed their feet and put his garments back on and reclined at table again, he said to them, do you realize what I have done for you? You call me teacher and master, and rightly so, for indeed I am. If I therefore, the master and teacher, have washed your feet, you ought to wash one another's feet. I've given you a model to follow, so that as I have done for you, you should also do. The Gospel of the Lord. It feels like it's been a while since we've been gathered together to celebrate Holy Thursday. That it feels like it's been a while since we've been able to, to pray together and really enter into this Triduum. And the reality is the, the last time we were able to pray like this was back in 2019. Last year, if you remember, all of us, or most of us here in the Archdiocese, we were invited to, to pray with Cardinal Supic as he celebrated the Triduum from Holy Name Cathedral. And so last year, as the pandemic began, as we entered into this holiest of weeks, we found ourselves in our homes, or some of us at work, praying and worshiping together as a community throughout the Archdiocese of Chicago. What we recognize today, almost a year later, is that not all of us are back here in church yet. And that's perfectly okay. We know that there are many people in our community who feel that it's not safe yet to return to here at church to anywhere else. And so what we recognize as a community of faith as we gather for this celebration of Triduum is that we've become a hybrid community. That some of us are here in person to worship in the sanctuary. That many of us are connected through our live streaming as we gather. But what we've been reflecting on together over these last weeks of Lent, and now as we enter into Triduum, is that we are a community of faith wherever it is that we find ourselves. 
that this is an opportunity for us. These days are a moment for us to really enter into the passion, the death and the resurrection of Jesus. This is a moment for us, a sacred season that, that lasts just a few hours to really enter into the mystery of those last days of Jesus' life here on this earth. The, the mystery of the resurrection and new life that Jesus comes to share with all of us. We recognize that even as we gather here in this moment and we're connected to each other in this celebration, that our celebration of Holy Thursday still isn't the same as what we're used to. Because of the pandemic, we won't be washing feet this evening. We didn't gather together as a community of faith for our, our annual potluck meal that we would share together on Holy Thursday. And yet the very essence, the very core, the very foundation of what it is that gathers us together on this Holy Thursday is still true for us on this night. That as we come together to celebrate this Mass of the Lord's Supper, as we gather together on this evening of the Triduum, we come together to celebrate this gift of life that is offered to us in Jesus. That what we celebrate on Holy Thursday is the gift of the Eucharist, the gift of that bread and wine that was broken and shared in that upper room, that bread and wine that becomes the body and blood, soul and divinity of Jesus. What we gather today to celebrate is the gift of priesthood, not just ordained priesthood, but our priesthood, our, our baptismal priesthood that all of us share in together as a community of faith. That we gather together tonight as a community to recognize that we are always called to be disciples who put our faith into action. I think that's what we hear as Jesus models for us what it looks like to be of service to one another. And so as we gather today for this celebration of Holy Thursday, even with all of, of all of that feels different in this celebration, we recognize that we're coming together as a community of faith to be reminded of the anointing that God has placed upon each and every one of our lives. I think that's the good news for us as we enter into the Triduum. This reminder that you and I are anointed for the mission of ministry in our world. You'll see on the altar the jars of oil. Ordinarily what happens on Holy Thursday is that the Chrism Mass is celebrated. So earlier today in Rome, Pope Francis celebrated the Chrism Mass in the morning and then later in the evening celebrated this feast of the Last Supper. For us here in the Archdiocese, we celebrate Chrism Mass on Tuesday. Cardinal Supic and the auxiliary bishops, some priests and some lay people from across the diocese gathered together at Holy Name to hear the blessing over the oils, the oil of the sick, the oil of catechumens, the sacred chrism, the oil that will be used not only here at St. Columbanus, but in parishes throughout the archdiocese over this next year, we're blessed in that celebration of the chrism mass. And so the oils that are here in our church are the oils that were blessed this week by Cardinal Supic. They're the oils that remind us that God has the power to bring healing in our moments of sickness. They're the oils that are used to anoint those who are entering into the life of our community and church. It's the oil that's used on the day of baptism to, to anoint people as priests, prophets, and kings. The oil that's used to confirm us, to seal us with the gift of the Holy Spirit. The oil that is used to consecrate churches and altars. The oil that is used to make priests. That the oil that we have here in our church, the oil that was blessed on that day of chrism, symbolically reminds all of us of this anointing that God has for each of us. This anointing that God is inviting us to pour out into the world around us. You see, what Jesus did as he gathered there in the upper room with those first disciples was offered for us, for them, for all of us, this model of what church is meant to look like. And for 2,000 years, as communities of faith like ours have gathered together on Holy Thursdays like this, we have been reminded of our anointing together to live as God's ministers in our worlds. That to do ministry in the church isn't just reserved to those of us who are ordained. 
It isn't just for those who have some advanced theological degrees. It isn't for just those who work full time for the life of the church. But every single one of us, by virtue of our baptism, are anointed to be ministers in our world. That you and I, on the day of our baptism, as we were anointed with that gift of chrism, we were invited to share in this threefold ministry of Jesus to live as priests and prophets and kings. That every day of our life is always meant to be a response to that moment of our baptism. That every time you and I gather together around this altar, every time we come here to this table of life, we are reminded of the ministry that God is calling us to exercise in this world. For some of us, our ministry is to pray. And for some of us, our ministry is to teach. And for some of us, our ministry is to sing. And for some of us, our ministry is to preach. For some of us, our ministry is the gift of our very presence. But you see, God has a ministry and an anointing for each of us. That what we come to do together, not just on Holy Thursday, but in every celebration of the Eucharist, is to find the strength to live as God is calling us to live. To recognize that every single day, God is in fact inviting us to use our lives to make an impact in the world around us. That God is inviting us to be the ministers who share God's love in our broken world. So we come here to this table to recognize that it is only by the gift of God's strength that you and I can do what it is that God is asking us to do with our lives. You see, when I think about that first celebration of Jesus with his disciples around that table, Jesus gathered with the one who would betray him and the one who would deny him. Jesus gathered with those who were hard-headed and couldn't understand everything that Jesus had been teaching. Jesus gathered at table with those who were fighting among themselves about who would be the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. Jesus was gathered with those who would leave him on the day of his crucifixion. And yet knowing everything about those he gathered at table with, he invited them. He made a space for them. He reminded them in that moment, in that upper room, that they were the ones who truly belonged. That in spite of all of their limitations and shortcomings and sinfulness, in spite of everything that happened in the past and everything Jesus knew was about to happen, he still took the bread and broke it and shared it and told them that this is my body. He was still willing to take that cup that was filled with wine to share it with those disciples, telling them that this is the new and eternal covenant. That Jesus was still willing to give his body and blood, not just for the salvation of those disciples in the upper room, but for us as we gather here this evening. See, what we are reminded as we celebrate this feast, this Holy Thursday, is that there is plenty of good room in God's house. That there's room here at this table of mercy. That all of us belong. That all of us have a place. You know, that's what we've been focused on uh, for more than a year now together as a community. We've been focused on how we are called to be living as a community of radical hospitality. Well, there's no greater example of what radical hospitality looks like than what it is that we celebrate on this very night. Than what it is that you and I will celebrate together over these days of our Triduum. Because Jesus knowing everything that he was about to face there in the city of Jerusalem, was still willing to lay down his very life, even for those who would betray and deny him. Not only did he sit at table with them, he was willing to take off his outer garments, to kneel before those same disciples, and to wash their feet. That Jesus wasn't just there at table, he became a servant to everyone that was there in that room, regardless of what they had done in the past, regardless of what he knew was coming soon. He was still willing to wash the feet of his betrayer. See, for me, that's the very model of what we are called to be as a community of faith. That is the model of, of what you and I are called to be as church alive in our world this very day to recognize 
that it is always our ministry as a people of faith to make sure that this is a place where everyone belongs. That we do our work to step out there into the world, to, to announce to the world that there is a place for them here in our Father's house. That it, no matter what's happened in their past, no, no matter the things that have gone on before, no matter the limitations that they might have on themselves in this moment, there is a place here in our community. And the invitation that you and I are always given as this community of faith is to be of service to one another. To recognize that if we really want to live as a community of radical hospitality, then, then this cannot be a community that judges. It can't be a community that holds on to the things of the past. It, it can't be a, a community that labels people based on all sorts of superficial things, that we have to be a community that's willing to serve one another. That we have to be willing to become like Jesus, to become the servant to one another. Because in doing so, what we reveal to ourselves, to one another, to the people that we encounter each and every day is what the love of God actually looks like. See, if we don't know how to do it for one another, if we don't practice it right here in our own community of faith, we're not gonna be very good at it when we leave the walls of this church. That's why Jesus, before he went there to the cross on Calvary, gathered with his disciples in the upper room to model for them what their life of ministry was meant to look like. Well, every time we gather together as this community of faith here in our upper room, it's a moment for us to model to one another what our life of ministry looks like that it's here, in this place, that figuratively we can wash one another's feet, that we can become of service to one another. All gathered around this table of mercy, that the invitation that God continues to extend to each of us is to allow our whole self to come here into this place so that God can love us as we are. The ministry that you and I are able to share with one another is to truly love one another as God has loved us. And then together as this parish family, as this community of faith, we are called to step out into the world and to share God's love with every person that we encounter. That's why Jesus challenged those disciples in the upper room, asking them the question if they understood what it was that he had done for them because he gave them the model for how they were called to live their life. Well, as we gather tonight at table to share that same bread that was broken and the same cup that was passed, as we gather together to be strengthened for our mission of putting faith into action, we are called to become servants to one another so that here in this upper room, we might experience this profound love that God has for each of us so that together we might be strengthened for our ministry of sharing God's love in our world. Let it 
fall on me. Anointing, let it fall on me. Let the power of the Holy Ghost fall on me. Anointing, fall on me. So trusting and believing that God is the one that hears us, that God is the one with the power to answer our prayers. It is with faith and hope that we bring our prayers and needs before our loving God. The response is, Lord, hear our prayers for the church, that we will wash one another's feet in imitation of Jesus, serving those in need generously, relentlessly, and cheerfully. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That political leaders and organizations work to alleviate hunger around the world so that even the poorest among us have, su have sustenance to satisfy their needs. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For peace in the Holy Land, the spiritual home of the Jewish, Christian, and Islamic faiths, that it might be a symbol to the whole world of the unity of humanity. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have responded to Jesus' call to service by dedicating their lives to God through the priesthood or religious life, that they may be renewed in heart and soul as they serve God's people. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our parish community and for those who will be joining our community at the Easter Vigil, that we might be strengthened regularly with the food of eternal life at the table of the Lord. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for those who risk their lives while fighting for fundamental rights under dictatorships, authoritarian regimes, and even in democracies in crisis. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And as we take a moment to think about our own intentions, please offer a moment of silence. For all of the prayers on our hearts and for all of the prayers shared with our community, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Most gracious and loving God, 
we truly give you thanks and praise. We thank you, Lord, for assembling us together to begin these most holy days. We thank you, Lord, for gathering us around this table of mercy. We thank you, Lord, for the gift of life that you continue to share with us. We ask you, God, to strengthen us by the gift and the grace of your Holy Spirit so that we might become the ministers that you are calling us to be. We ask you, Lord, to use us as we seek to share your love in our world. We thank you, Lord, for the blessings that you've shared and for everything that is promised as we pray together through Christ our Lord. Amen. No matter what the problem may be, I'm gonna lift the Lord for the whole world to see. I've got the victory for he is my king. He's the reason that I sing. No matter what the problem may be, I'm gonna lift him for the whole world to see. I've got the victory for he is my king. He's the reason that I sing. Said if I be lifted up, I'll draw all men unto me. I know that I'm gonna lift him up till he speaks from eternity. Jesus said if I be lifted up, I'll draw all men unto me. I know that I'm gonna lift him up to he speaks from eternity no matter what the problem may be I'm gonna lift the Lord for the whole world to see I've got the victory for Jesus is my king he's the reason that I sing said if I be lifted up I'll draw all men unto me I know that I'm gonna lift him up till he speaks from eternity. Said if I be lifted up, I'll draw all men unto me. I know that I'm gonna lift him up till he speaks from eternity. So lift him up, so lift him up, lift him up. Higher and higher, lift the Lord up, lift him up, lift him up, higher and higher, lift him up, lift him up, lift him up, higher and higher, lift him up, lift him up, lift him up, higher and higher, lift him up, lift the Lord up. The Lord up higher and higher. Lift him up. I'm gonna lift him up. I'm gonna lift him up higher and higher. Higher, 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 higher and higher. Lord, you're worthy. Lord, you're worthy. Lord, you're worthy. Higher and higher. I'll lift you up higher, higher and higher, 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 higher and higher. Pray, my sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Grant us, O Lord, we pray, that we may participate worthily in these mysteries. For whenever the memorial of this sacrifice is celebrated, the work of our redemption is accomplished through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. 
let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For he is the true and eternal priest, who instituted the pattern of an everlasting sacrifice, and was the first to offer himself as the saving victim, commanding us to make this offering as his memorial. As we eat his flesh that was sacrificed for us, we are made strong. And as we drink his blood that was poured out for us, we are washed clean. And so, with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the host and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 holy Lord God. in the name of the Lord, of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest, Hosanna in the You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread. In giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O oh Lord, until you come again. Therefore, O oh Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. 
may he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Columbanus, St. Dorothy, and St. Clotilde, and with all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family who have been summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him, and with him, and in him, O oh God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Together as one family, Together in one voice, we pray in the words that our Savior taught us. who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. Agnus Dei Qui tollis peccata mundi, miserere nobis. Agnus Dei, qui tollis peccata mundi, miserere nobis. Agnus Dei, Qui tollis peccata mundi, 
Dona nobis pace. This is Jesus who invites us here to this table. This is Jesus who reminds us that we belong. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. So loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that So believing on him should not perish, should not perish, but they shall have they shall have everlasting life but they shall Oh, 
pray. Grant, Almighty God, that just as we are renewed by the supper of your Son in this present age, so we may enjoy his banquet for all eternity, who lives and reigns forever and ever. So let's thank Kevin and Damon for the gift of their ministry. Of course, we want to thank Jennifer, who's making sure that we're live streaming as uh, we're gathered together this evening. You're invited to join us tomorrow for our Good Friday service. That's at 3 p.m. tomorrow. Then at 6.30 p.m. tomorrow, virtually, our Seven Last Words service will premiere on our YouTube channel. Uh, so 3 o'clock for our Good Friday service here in church, 6.30 p.m. on YouTube, the Seven Last Words service. So as we bring uh, the Eucharist to the altar of repose, I'll invite you to stay there in your place. Uh, Kevin will lead us in a song. Church will remain open until midnight for you to be here, to come back here, to spend some time in prayer and reflection as we enter into this triduum.
day after day forever faithful towards me you're always providing for me great is your mercy towards me great is your grace great is your mercy towards me your loving kindness towards me your tender mercies I see day after day forever faithful towards me always providing for me Great is your mercy towards me. Great is your grace. 